Okay, hello and welcome to everyone joining us. I think a couple of people are still joining us with audio. Um, so we're doing a online seminar with the University of Dundee. Really happy to have so many students here today. Um, the session will be led by Mish, who is at the university, and also Danny, who is a recent graduate at the University of Dundee. So I will just, um, we'll give it a, one or two more minutes till we have more students come through. And then I'll do another introduction and we can kickstart. If you've just joined us, can you let us know in the chat where you're from and what you'd like to study um, in the chat box? That'd be great. All right, we're going to start now. Hello and welcome again, everyone, to the session with the University of Dundee today. We're doing an online seminar, which is being headed up by Mish Datani from the university and also Danny, who is a recent graduate. Thank you so much both for joining us today. Um, we're going to be live streaming this on YouTube. So if anyone needs the link after, do drop us a message in the chat box and we will send it across. Um, just some housekeeping notes, do stay on mute. Um, up until the end of the session, we will be using the final few minutes of the session for any questions that you've got as well. So in the meantime, you can pop any questions in the chat box uh, and we'll do our best in the background to answer them while you're waiting. All right, over to you, Mish. Thank you very much, Ravina. Um, I'll just uh, start by sharing my screen. So just to give me one moment to do that. Uh, and hopefully you can see that and I will go to full screen mode. There we go, lovely. Okay, so um, thanks everybody for joining. Um, and as uh, I've been introduced, my name is Mish. I'm the regional lead for um, UK International and Europe at the University of Dundee. Um, and you can see our uh, contact details there on the screen. Um, I'm also joined by Danny uh, today as well, who is one of our uh, international student ambassadors who's just about to or just graduated um, and then you will also be speaking uh, after I will um, to share his experiences of being an international student at the University of Dundee. Um, there will also be an opportunity at the end for questions so um, as Ravina said if you've got any questions while Danny or I are speaking you can <clears throat> type them in the chat box but otherwise you are welcome to wait until the end uh, and ask us then okay so um <coughs> excuse me so i'll just start by um talking a little bit about the university uh well i say that talking about scotland really more in general because um you know scotland's really well known for uh, its history of university uh, education. You know, we've got some of the oldest universities in the world, uh, in Scotland, um, but also uh, things that come with Scotland are some stunning lands landscapes. Um, <coughs> excuse me. Uh, some really beautiful uh, facilities. The, the picture you can see on your screen there is a, is a castle. And you've also got um, really what I would say is a... Uh, you know, thriving arts and culture scene, lots of things in terms of um, festivals and uh, things like museums and exhibitions and galleries. And I'll talk a little bit about Dundee and what it has to offer as well you know, shortly. Um, you've also got some really friendly people. Um, I personally uh, didn't go to university in Scotland. I, I studied uh, in England and um, I'm from London originally, I was born there, but I moved to Scotland um, and I've been here now for almost seven and a half years and I've had a fantastic experience so far. I really, really enjoyed it and part of that is to do with the fact that there are so many friendly people here, everyone is really welcoming uh, regardless of, of where you're from, you know, and that's obviously a fantastic thing to be able to share with you. Um, and Scotland itself does have a, a rich and, and historic culture. 
uh, and, and heritage, lots of historical things you can uh, come and see and do and get involved in if you do decide that Scotland as a whole is a destination for you. But hopefully you also decide that the University of Dundee itself is somewhere that you'd, you'd like to actually take that up. And um, in terms of the city of Dundee, the, the this picture you can see on your screen is a view from across the water, okay? Um, and so if you're coming from Fife, which is just uh, on the on the way from Edinburgh, and I'll show you a map uh, on the next slide um, of where Dundee exactly is, uh, you can actually see um, the the university in, in the picture there um, towards the, the left of the bridge, um, with the bridge being on your right, um, and, and Dundee itself is a uh, UNESCO city of design. It's the only one in the UK, okay? Um, the population of the city is around 150,000. So uh, it's actually, you know, not that much uh, different to Oxford, for example, okay? Um, and a lot of places have, you know, a lot of uh, what I would call, you know, travel magazines and uh, people who, who do reviews for where to go and, you know, a lonely planet type of, of guide to said Dundee's really a must visit destination. You know, GQ magazine uh, a few years ago called us Brit Britain's coolest little city. Um, one of the other things about Dundee is it's really relatively cheap um, as well. So the cost of living is comparatively lower than both other parts of Scotland, but also other parts of the UK. Um, and that's something our students uh, also benefit from, uh, of course. So where exactly is Dundee, you may be asking. Um, and, you know, I can understand why you might be thinking that if you're not exactly sure. Um, so we're just north of Edinburgh and you could get to Dundee from Edinburgh in about an hour uh, on a fast train uh, or it's an hour from Edinburgh Airport uh, on the road. So very convenient uh, in terms of location. Um, you can also get to um, Dundee from Glasgow. It's a, just under an hour and a half from, from the center of Glasgow. Uh, you can actually fly from London. So Dundee itself does have an airport, um, which is linked with London City Airport. So, uh, but London City mainly receives flights from, um, you know, European destinations. And, and what you'll find is that, um, you know, we generally recommend most of our students to come into Edinburgh. There's a direct uh, airport bus from Edinburgh Airport that, that brings you into Dundee, takes an hour, um, and is you know much cheaper than than getting a taxi for example so really convenient um, to, to do that and that runs 24 hours a day so again uh, a, a really easy option to get to Dundee you know making it an accessible city um, quite typically if you're coming from overseas and you're coming from you know the east you're, you're probably connecting somewhere uh, in Amsterdam for example um, that's quite typical um, and often as well, sometimes people will connect via Paris. So again, uh, you know, those places all connect with Edinburgh and then from Edinburgh, it's a short journey on to Dundee. Dundee is also known as the sunniest city in Scotland. Um, you know, and one of the questions I often get as a member of staff at the university is, what's the weather like in Scotland? Isn't it really cold? Isn't there really uh, lots and lots of snow? Uh, I mean, I've been here seven and a half years almost, as I said, and I probably only experienced significant snow twice. You know, and part of that is to do with Dundee's location. Uh, we're on the East Coast, very close to uh, the water, you know, the River Tay is, is uh, just by us and it leads out into the North Sea. Um, so, you know, there's always a strong breeze which tends to push the snow inland, for example. So we, we don't tend to get as much snow uh, as you might think um, other places in Scotland do. Uh, but also, um, you know, right now, for example, uh, you know, the temperature is in the mid 20s, you know, at the moment. And, uh, you know, obviously we're going through a, a bit of a hot spell for anybody who is in the UK, but uh, generally speaking, Dundee's may be two, three degrees cooler uh, than what you might expect uh, further down south. So, you know, pleasant climate, less rain on the East Coast, which means that if you're, if you like less rain and more sunshine, but you don't mind being two or three degrees cooler, then Dundee's uh, a great place to be, okay? Um, in terms of the arts and culture in Dundee, I mentioned uh, some of these things, or you know, are, are you know present in Scotland in general. But 
um, we've got some amazing things. So in, in one of the pictures there, you can see the Victorian Albert Museum of Design, uh, the only one of its kind outside of London. Um, you've got the Discovery ship, um, you know, which is the ship built in, in 1901 uh, for Captain Scott who traveled to the Antarctic. Um, you've got some amazing um, museums which cover the history of the city. So uh, things like the McManus Galleries and the Verdant Works, for example. So lots of things if you're interested in history and culture and arts um, to do, but also lots to do in terms of the social aspect. So um, if you're the type of person who does like to socialize and go out, uh, there are bars, clubs, restaurants, that sort of thing. Uh, there's a live music scene, um, you know, and I know Danny's a bit of a musician, so I'm sure he'll cover that when he's speaking later. Um, there's international food stores and supermarkets. So, you know, if you're not, um, you know, if you're the kind of person who misses home a little bit and wants to taste something a bit more authentic and you can make it yourself, you can go and pick up the raw, you know, raw ingredients from, from one of the local supermarkets. Um, and Dundee does have a really nice laid back culture, lots of coffee shops and places to relax. Um, and, and that's obviously a, a nice thing because as well, Dundee is quite a green uh, city. Uh, it's really well known for its initiatives uh, in terms of things like um, you know, electric vehicles and uh, charging points around the city, um, lots of uh, spaces in terms of green spaces. Um, there are There is a beach, for example, and, you know, at times of the year, you can actually spot dolphins um, off the beach. So, you know, um, that's obviously an amazing thing. You know, I never, never realised that before I had come to Dundee or, or Scotland. Um, but also, if you want to go climbing and hill walking, you want to go up to the mountains you can do that all within easy reach of Dundee um, and, and that's the brilliant thing the location really does lend itself to all sorts of experiences so in terms of the university itself um, we've got um, you know a range of courses and I'll, I'll talk a little bit about those in, in a bit more detail but just to give you a bit of a background on the university um, university has been in, in existence in one form or another for uh, over well over 115, 120 years. Um, and we were formerly a college of the University of St. Andrews, um, but became a university in our own right in the 1960s, uh, when there were more universities um, that, that were born out of colleges because of the, the sheer number of students being able to, to access them. And University of Dundee was, was one of those. And, um, you know, one of the, the great things is that, you know, we've got a broad range of uh, options for you as students. Um, we are ranked as one of the, the top uh, 35 universities in the UK. So really uh, positive rankings. Um, and if that's something that matters to you or makes a difference to your choice, um, then here are some, some of the, the rankings um, that you might, you know, wish to, to consider. So I mentioned that we're top 35 university in the UK in, in, in a couple of the league tables. Uh, we're one of the world's um, top 200 universities for graduate, graduate employment rate, uh, according to QS. Um, top in the UK for climate action. So if you're the type of individual who is really keen on, on the environment and, you know, we offer courses in uh, that area as well but but if that's something that's important to the, the you know it's something that is also important to the university um, and we have great graduate prospects too so you can find all of these and more uh, on our website um, you know you'll be able to actually take uh, a bit more information from there uh, as well in terms of our campus there's a bit of an aerial shot there for you okay um, so the campus is quite dense uh, you know there's you can get from one end to the camp, one end of the campus to the other in about ten minutes or so, um, and you know, roughly speaking, <coughs> overall you've got in the region of sixteen thousand students, but around twelve and a half, thirteen thousand uh, on campus at any one time. Um, the campus itself is in the city, so it's a very short walking distance. So uh, I live in the city centre. When I go to campus, uh, I'm walking in, um, and it's less than fifteen minutes door to door for me. Um, you know, so really convenient location, less than 10 minutes from the train station um, as well, uh, around 15 minutes from the bus station. Uh, so if you're, you know, living just outside of the center of the city, it's very easy to get to the university campus. 
Uh, we've got ensuite halls on, on campus and some of those you'll be able to see uh, on the aerial uh, picture that you've got on the screen there. Um, and we've got a fantastic student union on site as well. So lots of things um, you know, for you to take into account there. You can probably also see some of the green spaces. Uh, we, we do have tennis courts. Um, so if you see that in the middle of the, the picture, uh, we do have uh, some tennis courts on, on uh, campus. And then um, so the, the majority of the sports facilities are certainly outdoor are uh, about a 15 minute walk away uh, close to the river um, but we do have the the uh, institute of sport and exercise on the main campus as well which is your sort of indoor sports facilities so you know your gym and that sort of thing as well there we have 10 academic schools okay um, and we offer courses in that much of a, of a range of areas so i'll just briefly cover each academic school so you get a, a flavor at least of, of what we offer so the first one is the the school of art and design actually um school where danny studied um so danny will be able to speak about his own experiences being a student within that school um uh, and they have a great range of courses within the art and design portfolio including things like graphic design product design um, architecture as well uh, comes under that um, and, and then you've got various masters um, you know in, in creative uh, subjects too. You've then got probably our biggest school in terms of the size uh, in terms of the number of students which is a school of business has a huge number of students uh, we have courses in a whole range of things so you know when it, both undergraduate and postgraduate um, and things like in standard business management or in management in general, but we also have accountancy, finance, business analytics. Um, we also have uh, courses in economics. Uh, so you've got quite a range uh, of courses, but you know you can also uh, combine subject areas, especially if you're if you're interested in undergraduate courses. Uh, you can combine courses from the School of Business with some of the courses within uh, some of our other schools as well. So there are some flexible degree options available to you. You've then got the School of Dentistry, uh, so we do have an undergraduate dentistry program and then we have a range of specialized masters uh, in dentistry as well. So again, a lot of um, you know, you know, science based things uh, on offer at the university as well as uh, some of your more creative and social science side of things um, and, and dentistry is one of the schools that um, is, although not the biggest in size, has some amazing facilities. So we have a dental hospital on site. Uh, on, on the campus, which is the, the dental hospital for the city, uh, for example. So if that's something you're interested in, great facility to explore. Uh, you've then got the School of Education and Social Work. So uh, courses within the social work area, uh, both at undergraduate and postgraduate level, and education mainly covers the, the teaching side of things. Uh, we do offer courses within health sciences. So um, within health sciences, you're mainly talking about nursing courses, both again, undergraduate and postgraduate, including for international students. So we do have uh, a, a small number of places for international students within nursing, um, and it is a growing area uh, in that sense. Uh, we also have the School of Humanities, um, <clears throat> which has courses in things like history, uh, English literature, creative writing, uh, languages, uh, they all fall under the School of Humanities. And again, you can combine some of the, the courses within humanities with, with business or with social sciences. Um, so I've just named a few of them, but there are a number of other courses within humanities as well. You've also got uh, the School of Life Sciences, uh, some, you know, an area that we're really, really well known for. Um, we've done some am amazing, amazing research. We've got uh, some fantastic facilities at the university within life sciences. So these things would include for biological and biomedical sciences, neuroscience, pharmacology, um, these types of areas, you know, microbiology. Um, and we really do have a strong reputation within the field. Um, and some of the local, um, you know, uh, companies are working in this area. We also work with, with big um, pharmaceutical companies and business that, that you know, combine some of their research with university academics. So they're on the cutting edge of some of the things that are on offer there. So really uh, a fantastic school if that's the kind of thing you're interested in. We do also have a fantastic school of medicine, 
Um, and, you know, we offer the undergraduate degree program in medicine, but we also have a range of masters within medicine too. So things like public health um, and uh, other areas that uh, are quite popular, like orthopedic surgery, for example. So uh, a range of master's programs available. Uh, you then got the School of Science and Engineering. It's quite a broad school, offer courses in mathematics, physics uh, and computing, as well as uh, biomedical engineering, where, for example, they're working on uh, projects that combine the engineering aspect with uh, the medical aspect, you know, so what you're looking at, for example, is robots perform, uh, performing um, small uh, minor surgeries, for example, you know, and, and that's something I've, you know, been able to witness in terms of uh, actually being able to see how uh, you know, this robot works and what they're the kind of research that the university is doing. So really fantastic opportunities there. Um, so School of Social Sciences, so uh, courses like law and geography uh, and psychology. Uh, we offer courses in oil and gas as well um, that come under the law side or the business side, depending on, on which specialization you want. Um, so lots of options there, really fantastic um, school for with lots of options there for you okay um in terms of accommodation i didn't mention earlier then that we we offer guaranteed uh accommodation for our students you've got to meet some deadlines and, and apply by a certain time but we do have uh ensuite accommodation on campus um and this is the cost uh from last year just as an indicative measure of what it might cost um you know and so Comparatively, you'll find that, that you know, the bigger cities like London or, or Manchester or Birmingham, Edinburgh, they may, they may cost a bit more than this. Um, so, you know, Dundee seems to be relatively affordable in comparison to, um, you know, other locations. And, and that's something that, of course, is important to students. And, um, you know, like I said, this is, these are the prices from last year, but you can obviously see the, the updated prices when they go live uh, in September. We offer courses in pre-sessional English for those that, that do require it. Um, you know, sometimes students do require some additional language support. So you can also get in-sessional English. So if you do require uh, ongoing English language support, you can actually do that. Uh, but, but you can see here, we do offer some, some pre-sessional courses. They are both online and in person. So you do have options to either do it online or, or come to campus. You know, some people prefer one, some people prefer the other. So again, uh, flexibility there in that sense. Uh, and then in terms of tuition fees, uh, we roughly uh, charge around 19,900 for classroom based courses. Uh, so these would be things like business, um, you know, for example, uh, lab based courses such as engineering um, will, will, you know, have a slightly higher charge because of the nature of the spe uh, specialist facilities. And then there can be higher uh, fees for very, you know, clinical type courses. So for example, medicine and dentistry have their own fee structure in place and uh, some of the art and design and other specialist courses will have their own fee structures. Um, and, and that's, you know, mainly for undergraduate, but the same applies for the postgraduate side. And what you will find is that the fees are advertised on each course page within the website, especially on the postgraduate side. Uh, we do also have scholarships available, uh, a range of scholarships um for international students so again you can find those uh on our website which is up on the screen there for you um and you can also find the contact details there should you wish to to get in touch um so that's all from me uh, i you know i've spoken for just over 20 minutes there to to cover the university but what i'll do is stop sharing my screen now and invite danny to to come and, and share his uh, and speak about his own experiences and i'll try and address some of the questions in the, the chat myself. Okay, so Danny, when you're ready, please feel free to, to share. Yeah, uh, sorry, let me just uh, switch the screens. Share screen, cool. Can you see this? Is this showing up all right, yeah? Yes. Yes, yeah. Yeah, wonderful, cool. Uh, so a little bit about myself. Let me turn my camera on. 
if uh, I've lost the icon. <laughs> there we go. Hi, guys. So uh, my name is Danny. A little bit of a self-introduction first. So I've uh, just recently graduated from uh, uh, Duncan and Jordanston, the Art College, uh, studying product design, uh, Bachelor in Science of Product Design. Um, I've spent the last four years of my life in Dundee. Uh, I'm originally from China and uh, I've been in the UK for about uh, coming up to my 13th year now. Uh, so I've been here for quite a while. Uh, I know uh, what it was like uh, coming here. Uh, uh, on my first day, it was a bit daunting still like can, can remember, can, I can still remember that quite, quite clearly. Uh, but yeah, so that that's a little bit of an origin story for myself. Um, I, I know that Misha has already covered this, but I think a big part of uh, uh, you guys coming over to uh, not just Dundee, uh, but any of the university within the UK is uh, living on campus. Uh, student accommodation is very uh, important to me. Uh, I really enjoyed uh, the uh, accommodation aspect, uh, certainly living in student hall because uh, some people do go into private rental in first year, but I opt for going to student accommodation, uh, you know, just uh, for the social aspect and uh, get to, getting to know uh, people that's uh, maybe in your course, in the, your flatmate who are the same age as you, uh, coming away from home for the first time as well. Uh, it, it's good to uh, have close peers uh, uh, originally, uh, and uh, I personally lived in uh, Seabreeze. Uh, I, you get to pick uh, which uh, accommodation that you want to go into, uh, although not guaranteed, but they do accommodate that quite well. Uh, I went, I ended up in Seabreeze, which is uh, one of the uh, accommodation on the premise. Uh, it literally five minutes walk uh, away from class. Uh, it's got a beautiful uh, seaside view from the uh, living room window uh, right next to a 24-hour uh, Tesco, which is great because, you know, that means I get to go shopping for food at three in the morning uh, when everything's on discount. Um, but, yeah, um, a little bit about my socializing uh, within, UK, uh, within the university. Uh, I already talked about uh, student accommodation as a great start. Uh, it doesn't force you outside to, to go out and talk to anyone, uh, especially uh, it's just with people that you live with is a, is a very good start. Uh, but uh, you, I think a big part of the university lifestyle is to get yourself involved uh, in as many things as possible. So, you know, uh, that may include, uh, you know, talking to your flatmate, going out to events, uh, uh, organize events, uh, getting invited out to things, invite others to things uh, within the city of Dundee or, you know, with the ease of transportation, go to Aberdeen, Edinburgh. Uh, certainly during the summer, we've got the Fringe, uh, which is a huge, huge festival in Edinburgh that runs every summer. Uh, so it's that, that's starting back up again. Uh, you know, if you do end up in Dundee or anywhere in Scotland, highly recommended. It's a really good day out. Uh, and another thing that you can do to socialize is societies. So for me, uh, I in first year joined the Backpacking Society. So we mainly went hiking, uh, go for walks uh, in the Highland, in the Scotland Highland. Uh, you know, if you're into the outdoors, uh, Scotland is... Uh, Second to none. I, I came to uh, Scotland uh, because I like the outdoors so much. So I go camping every now and again, especially now the weather's gorgeous. Uh, it is really, really warm. Uh, it, you can go swimming a lot. <laughs> uh, so yeah, it was it, it's great. So that's one of the society. And then, uh, then I joined the Dundee University Big Band. So we then started, uh, uh, I, I played a saxophone, as you can see the photo. Uh, and, you know, that was a great experience like, to be able to pick up my instrument again and join a society just to play music with others, uh, performing uh, as well. Uh, 
and I now and uh, I then ended up running it for two years. Uh, I'm actually still running it uh, as of uh, now. Uh, you know, we are doing different shows, going to uh, do a lot of more gigs uh, for outside of uni as well, as well as inside of uni. Uh, we gain a lot of popularity. We, we play uh, at a lot of university organized events as well. So, you know, uh, there's plenty of opportunities uh, for what you want to do. And society is one of the biggest ones that I cannot recommend enough because you end up just meeting new people uh, and uh, that shares a common interest and, in, you know, having a, a blast. Uh, and I've also included a, a few photos of Dundee, uh, just uh, photos that I've captured. Uh, photography is one of my hobby, uh, trying to uh, take it professional. Uh, but the market is quite hard for that. Uh, but yeah, I just thought I would include a few photos of Dundee to show you what uh, you can expect. Uh, but yeah, uh, that is all from me just now. But if you do have any questions about uh, product design as a course or any course in, within the uh, uh, art school or you know just general life within Scotland, in the UK, uh, feel free to pop them in the questions. And do I pass it back to Mish? Yeah. Thank you. Thanks, Danny. Um, yeah, so I can see I'll just uh, address some of the questions verbally as well. Uh, I've tried to answer some of them in the chat, but, you know, other people may be thinking about the same things. So it's obviously useful to um, answer those questions uh, so that everybody can, can hear those answers. Um, so uh, in terms of um, anybody... Uh, who has applied already, for example, um, uh, I saw one question about a current uh, application. Uh, you will receive a response in, in due course if you've already applied. Um, and, you know, now um, applications are actually closing tomorrow for the September intake uh, for postgraduate courses. For undergraduate courses, applications are still open up until uh, late August. Um, so you still have about just over a month to apply for undergraduate courses, but postgraduate courses are closing uh, actually tomorrow, uh, sorry, later this week, apologies. Um, and so, you know, we would encourage you to either make sure you submit your application very soon, or, you know, if you're interested in a postgraduate course that also has a January intake, you can apply for January. And that's not a problem because we do offer intakes in January as well as September for those of you considering doing master's courses. And you'll find that information, um, you know, uh, on the website. So Danny, if you could do me a favor and put a link in the chat or with the postgraduate courses, that would be really helpful. Okay. Um, yeah, sure. Uh, Fish, before you continue, I just thought I'd uh, correct you on one of your <laughs> answers. Uh, for the work uh, on, certainly yeah. on my current visa, it is 20 hours a week, not a day. Sorry, uh, a week. Apologies. That's what. Yeah, yeah. I, I, uh, I really. That was. I was going to come back to that and, and answer it. So, um, apologies uh, that I made that mistake. I meant a week, um, but I was just about to come on camera as you had just finished up. So, uh, yeah, thank you for for pointing that out. Uh, so that would have. Uh, that is correct. That actually, when you are a current student, um, you know, and on a student visa um currently uh, you know and these rules can change so it's important that you keep up to date uh, with those that currently you can work 20 hours a week uh, as a student while you're yeah studying. and uh, that as far uh, as far as i know is for uh on the graduate is uh, 20 hours a day uh the rules applies uh differently for postgraduate if you're looking to do a postgraduate uh course i believe uh it doesn't actually allow you to work but that is uh a, a, something that you would have to look into yeah but. so so there are certain rules and it, and it will depend on the course that you're you're interested in uh, i think the important thing is just to note that of course we're not here just to uh talk about working at the same time as studying but but of course that you know we're under understanding that this is a question that uh, some people may have uh, and so, yeah, absolutely, you can do that, but also uh, you have to uh, abide by, uh, you know, your, your visa rules. So that's obviously 
something uh, that you need to ensure that you do. Um, in terms of another question um, that was received uh, was about um, uh, the different types of courses we have. So um, I think Danny's just shared the postgraduate link. I shared the undergraduate link earlier in the chat. Uh, so you can see that. Uh, so if you're interested in either area, you can go and click on those links, look at the subjects that we have to offer um, and, and have a think about if there's anything that suits you, okay? Um, there were a few questions on scholarships as well. Uh, so we do have uh, quite a range of scholarships and they do vary in terms of the size and also in terms of the uh, eligi eligibility criteria. So what you need to ensure is that you, you check um, in terms of if you're eligible for that scholarship. Some of them are um, scholarships that are automatically awarded, so you do not have to apply. And some of those scholarships you do have to apply for. Um, you know, so you, again, there are a, a range of options uh, available to you. And I've put the link uh, in the chat for the scholarships page, um, and you can actually go and have a look at that. Uh, and the scholarships are, are confirmed for this September and the coming January intake. So if you're not applying uh, for this September, but you're considering January, especially as a postgraduate, uh, then, then you've got that option there uh, for you, okay? Um, additionally, uh, I did notice, um, you know, uh, some more questions coming in that haven't actually uh, had an opportunity to um, answer. And actually there was a question for you, Danny, from Ethan. Um, and I, um, I've just seen that you said you'll get to it in a sec. So I'll let you address that now yeah. while you're on, on mic. Yeah, cool. Um, so uh, just to uh, repeat what Ian, uh, Ethan's question is uh, about uh, the typical lecture hours and teacher to student ratio uh, within the art and design courses. So for me, it was uh, you have studio time allocated every day. So uh, the studio is, you can treat it like an office. So you're going every day and uh, you have a table for yourself. Uh, and of course you have all the facilities uh, within, uh, uh, you have all the uh, facilities within the university as well for you to use Monday to Friday. Uh, and uh, the library sometimes is open on Saturday as well. Uh, so one thing that was really good about uh, uh, DJ CAD, uh, the Duncan Charleston Art and Design, is that we have our own library. Um, so the book is more directed uh, for uh, 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 art and design courses. Uh, so Monday to Friday, you can go in uh, uh, to use the space as you wish. Uh, in terms of actual lecture time, uh, like class time, you have uh, three days a week, which is typical, um, but that will increase uh, throughout the year. So I started in first year with uh, three days a week scheduled in, uh, in class time. Uh, that includes a, a small mini lecture in the studio space uh, on uh, in the morning, and then we'll get on with a couple of tasks. Uh, and then we'll move through to lunch in the afternoon is basically studio time. Uh, and that will be like that for three days a week. The other two days is that, you know, you can go in to do uh, your work uh, or you can, uh, you know, do research in the library or elsewhere. That's up to you. Uh, however, when you get to fourth year, uh, we won't get many lectures per se, because uh, fourth year is our honors degree. So then we uh, have to think of our own brief. Uh, as students, uh, we then need to carry out uh, our brief, our uh, think of it as a sort of science experiment. You need to carry out your own hypothesis, uh, go out to interview, uh, do your research, uh, manufacture your product. Uh, and that's the same across all uh, art and design disciplines. So, yeah, um, you won't have lecture time, but it would be highly recommended that you spend as much time in studio as possible as it is a place to work uh, and you have uh, lectures that will float about uh, in, that, in and out of class all day uh, and you can you know grab them for questions uh, or go down to one of the very helpful um, technicians in any of the labs uh, if you have questions regarding for example uh, you your your projects re require uh, woodwork and you're not so sure about how uh, you would join two pieces of wood together for your uh, specific project then you would typically go down to the wood workshop and say to one of the technicians 
this is what I'm making, this is what I'm thinking. Uh, let me know uh, what you think. Do you think this will work or do you have a better idea? And, you know, they are more than happy to bounce ideas uh, off of you. Uh, hopefully that answers your question, Ethan. Uh, if you've got any follow-ups, let me know. Thanks very much, Danny, for answering that uh, from Ethan. Um, what uh, I was going to also uh, just briefly cover is, uh, I know I mentioned it in the, the presentation, um, that uh, you know Dundee is a, a fairly affordable place and, and a place that has a low cost of living. Um, you know, and, and that's something that I think that, um, you know, is obviously uh, something that is important to students. So that's uh, a point. Uh, Danny, would you um, share what your experiences were in terms of, um, you know, if you've gone to other cities and, and seen a difference in cost compared to, to Dundee, for example? Yeah, of course. Uh, so, um, uh, I go to Edinburgh quite often, uh, and uh, I, I know Edinburgh is like kind of the other side of the extreme within uh, Scotland, uh, within this uh, uh, the scene of Scotland, where cost in Edinburgh is, you know. Uh, it's kind of famous how 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 much more expensive they would be, but then you would expect that because it is a city. Um, so uh, let's say so. A good example I like to use is the rent. So I'm currently in private rental, and I've lived in this flat for the past four years. You know, and uh, it's you know it roughly works out about three hundred pound a month. Uh, and uh, I got quite lucky with this flat. We, got, we have a garden and we have Wi-Fi included, uh, but that's around the ballpark that you can expect with uh, private rental uh, uh, in Dundee. However, if you go to uh, Edinburgh with the similar type of location uh, and facilities, uh, you're looking at about £600 uh, per month. Uh, five if you the cheapest but you're looking at about averaging out about 600 um and that's not including bills so you know dundee is really 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 is a cheap uh student city very affordable and i know people that uh, go to university in st andrews would actually opt to live in uh, dundee and commute uh every single day to for for the lectures um I think that 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 is a testimony to uh, how uh, affordable and uh, you know livable Dundee is as a city, and you know there's plenty of things to do as well. Um, it's not like you know uh, it's boring or anything like that. There's plenty of shops, coffee shops, like Mish said earlier. Uh, plenty of entertainment, cinema. Uh, you know that we we have a cinema within the city centre that you know if you're a student, it only costs five pound uh, per ticket, and uh, they have all some of the biggest. Uh, blockbuster movies uh, as well as uh, like indie independent movies uh, so there's a wider range of things to explore uh, even within the city center uh, but yeah thank you thanks Danny um, uh, and I just thought as well I would actually address a question that I think um, a couple of people have asked about deadlines in terms of applying um, and for example uh, there was a question regarding uh, September uh, 2022 intake for certain courses and um, so as I mentioned during the the session that the postgraduate courses are are closing just in the next couple of days so um, you know if you are considering an application for this September I'd encourage you to get it in as soon as possible within the next 24 48 hours um, otherwise um, you know the other option is the January 2023 intake for for uh, a lot of our masters do have uh, the option of having a January intake. So that's certainly possible, especially for certain courses that we've had questions on things like business or finance and things like that. They all, they all have January intakes, okay? Um, and then uh, another question um, I, I also received uh, via direct message again, which I'll answer uh, in the, the forum was with regards to um, you know, uh, gaps in between, uh, you know, work experience and things like that. So, look, we don't typically look at or request CVs um, or, you know, when you're making an application, 
sometimes it can be useful to include this so we can obviously see your employment uh, background. Um, but typically, you know, if you've uh, studied in the last few years and you've graduated in that time, then you'll be able to actually, um, you know, apply without any issues and, and you know, will obviously require your, your documents and things like your degree certificate um, and your, your transcript typically as well. These are the things that are required. Any proof of English language um, is also typically required. Um, and then some courses may require additional documentation or additional things. So for example, some of the art and design courses may require portfolio. Um, you know, uh, that can be an example of additional requirements or some of the teaching courses may require you to have work experience and very specific work experience, you know. So again, these are part of that um, entry requirement. So again, these will all be covered within the course pages. Um, and if you feel like it doesn't have enough information for you, you can always get in touch by email and we will try and answer your question by email thereafter. Okay. Um, Danny, I think Ethan did come back with another question just regarding your experience of student to teacher ratio. Um, so if you're you know, happy to just briefly address that, that would be great. Yeah, of course. So uh, some of the highlights, uh, I suppose. So the, the way that the student teacher uh, interaction works uh, is that in first year, you're very much like, you know, like it feels a little bit like your secondary school that where you have a teacher that's teaching you a class and that will give you a task and you will get on with the task uh, and the lecturer will be there to give you guidance throughout. But as you progress through the years, you will have uh, uh, less and less of that, uh, more of independent uh, study and research uh, where you will be given a very brief, uh, uh, brief outline uh, and you go and uh, uh, produce uh, uh, an outcome. Uh, and the, the, the style of teaching here is very much like, uh, I, I like to describe it as that they don't teach you what to think, they teach you how to think. Therefore, they don't really tell you what to do. Uh, if you go up to a lecture with a question, they will very often come back and say, well, uh, here are some of the things that you can explore rather than telling you, say, this is what you can do. Uh, so, uh, uh, that being said, when it comes to uh, our fourth year, where I had the most benefit, I say, out of the student and the teacher time, is that uh, the lectures, uh, certainly my lecture, often would have a sign-up sheet for tutorials, one-to-one -one tutorials uh, uh, on the wall and, or, or online. Uh, every lecture works slightly differently. Some people prefer to go analog, some people like to do things online. Uh, so you essentially, it's, it's the same format, you sign up uh, uh, for a time, uh, whether or not that's on a piece of paper or on an Excel sheet, you sign up for a half an hour, one hour slot, uh, and then just tell the lecturer, say, here, this is what I'm working on. Um, do you think I'm on the right track? Uh, and the lecturer will often come back and uh, with sayings like, "Yes, th this is this is great," um, but have you looked at uh, a thing about this aspect uh, of your design, uh, or have you tried this? Have you? Uh, there's a very interesting article here that I've read somewhere. Uh, you, you, uh, you might be benefit for you to go have a read. Uh, so you can have as much or as little student teacher interaction as you want really uh, i think that's where i'm getting to because uh, i know that there's people you know that progressed throughout the uni without uh, much uh, interaction with their lectures uh, but i also know there's people that you know will have a tutorial uh, every other day with their lecture uh, go out for coffee uh, uh, to talk about the project uh, and you know stuff like that and by the end of the fourth year, you, you very much become mates with, uh, with, with your lecture. Uh, the, the one thing with university, I think a lot of people don't really get or understand until they come to the university and experience is that the lectures are, they are your teachers at the end of the day, but they are not your teachers in a traditional sense uh, of, uh, uh, you know, in a secondary school. Uh, certainly when I was in a secondary school in the UK, I, I, uh, a teacher walks in, I'm like, uh, good morning, sir. That kind of 
like it, you, you very much drop that attitude uh, and you go like, hi Andrew, how are you doing in the morning? You know, in the morning, um, and we would we would go out and uh, uh, to the bar, have a pint, or stuff like that. You know, it, the 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 attitude towards uh, your lectures are more peer to peer. Uh, therefore, they don't force you to talk to them. But uh, if you do feel like uh, you need to uh, uh, talk to them for some guidance, or if they feel like uh, you've not talked to them for, you know, uh, three months, then you know they they will be worried. <laughs> so uh, yeah, uh, you you can have as much interaction or as little interaction as you as you wish. Uh, but I would encourage you to have. Uh, plenty of interaction with your lecturers because at the end of the day, they're your mentor. They're there to open your mind uh, to bounce ideas off for you. Um, but yeah, hopefully that answers that question. Yeah, thanks. Thanks, Danny. Um, that's great, actually. And yeah, um, you know, I've, I've put uh, a message in the chat as well for anybody wanting to get in touch afterwards. Um, as I've also mentioned, you can also contact your uh, you know, SIUK uh, contact locally um, and, and they will also support you with any questions um, uh, as they're a partner of the University of Dundee. So, you know, by all means, feel free to, to reach out to us or to them uh, and, and take this uh, forward. So um, just to answer sort of one final question then uh, that's coming to the chat before we, we wrap up is that, you know, does the university offer free online access to, to research papers and, and journals and articles? And um, the answer is yes, um, essentially, um, you know, that uh, is included uh, in terms of, you know, your, your tuition fee cost. You know, a lot of the money of the, the tuition fees actually will go towards things like that. Um, and so it's included, uh, you know, the access that you have, you can access that with your university login, um, you can, you know, print articles, you can save articles, um, and it's very easy to, to access those either from the campus, uh, if you're in, in the library, for example, or you're, you're in university accommodation, or actually even from home, you know, you just sign in uh, using your remote access, um, and, and you'll be able to do that too. So absolutely, uh, if you're, the, you know, needing to do research as part of your degree, uh, and, and you're wanting to read journal articles and, and look into papers and things like that, that it's uh, absolutely uh, possible um, and included uh, as part of your, you know, learning experience. And, you know, by the end of that, hopefully you'll, you'll, you'll have, uh, you know, managed to um, do all of that so that you can then uh, obviously, you know, continue to use that in your future career if you do end up working in that industry, of course. Okay. So um, I think, you know, from, from our perspective, um, it's been great to, to have you uh, listen to us to ask questions that you have and people have been very, um, you know, involved in the chat and we've had some direct messages, we've had some uh, general chat messages. So thanks everybody for that. Um, and I've put the contact details and mentioned how you can get in touch. So I would like to say thanks for, for coming on to the session today. Um, and hopefully we will see you submit an application to the University of Dundee in the near future. Um, otherwise, have a brilliant rest of the day, um, and we will see you soon. Thank you. Bye. Hello, everyone. Thank you for coming online. Uh, much appreciated that, you know, you've taken the time and the opportunity, wherever you're, you are applying from or wherever, wherever your interest is from. For with regards to the University of Dundee, as you know, Danny and Michelle have done a great job in explaining what the University of Dundee is about. I'm sure that there's many international students, you know, they only know about the England in terms of the UK. So it's good to get an idea of Dundee, it's good to get an idea of Scotland, how far it actually is, what well, like like Mish mentioned, what the weather's like, and you know, all all all, all of that in a in a very summarized form. So if there's as, as you finished all your questions and Mish has explained everything, uh, we will be wrapping up for the day. Thank you for joining.